In the previous video, we added a feature that allowed users to update their personal information and passwords within the account settings page. In this video, we will be adding a password reset functionality so that they are able to reset passwords before logging in. This might be a bit tricky to implement on the Fortify side because we need to generate a dynamic URL that includes a token and the URL must have the SPA domain instead of the API domain. So let's dive right in and implement the password reset functionality. First thing we need to do is we need to enable the reset passwords feature on the Fortify config file. So let's uncomment this. Next, we need to uncomment the necessary routes in our API routes file. So let's scroll down and these are the password reset routes. So I'm going to uncomment these. And we also need to move these routes out of the auth sanctum uh, middleware group because these routes are for the guest user. And we'll put it right here and let's see which routes we don't need. So wherever you see the get routes here, these are the ones that render the views. So we don't need uh, these routes because we're not rendering anything on the Laravel side. Uh, we'll be doing that on the SBA side. So we could delete this. And the second get route, I'm going to comment this out for now because I want to reference it back uh, when I'll be explaining how the password reset actually works. Uh, we'll be referencing this name here, password.reset. So let's keep it commented out for now. And the other two routes we need, these are the post requests. So I'm going to import the controllers and let's dive into these controllers and see how they actually work. First route is the route where we'll make post requests to start the reset password process. This is the route that will send the email to the user. So let's see how it works. First thing it does, it validates the email and this can be configured within the Fortify's config file if you need it. Then it sends the reset link email using the password broker. And if the reset link was sent, it returns the success response, otherwise returns the failed response. And these two are contracts, so you could implement your own implementations if you want to. Now let's see what the send reset uh, link actually does. To do that, we need to find out which broker it uses. And we see that broker is gotten from the config file. So if we open the Fortify's config file and we scroll to the password section, we see that it uses uh, the users here. And this is the reference to the auth config file. So if we open the auth config file and scroll down to the reset password section, which is this, we see that we have the users here and this is the broker. So this is what the Fortify config file is referencing to. So now we know where the broker is coming from. And now we need to open the password broker implementation. And we have this send reset uh, link method here. And this is the method that gets called from right here. It takes two parameters. First one is credentials and the optional callback. Uh, it uses the credentials to find the user. And if the user exists and the token was not recently created, it creates the token. And then if the callback was given, then it uh, calls that callback. So that means that it puts the logic of sending a notification on that callback. Otherwise, it sends the notification using this method on the user model. So one way of customizing of what the URL and how the email is sent uh, is we could create our own controller instead of this controller and copy this method and change the route here to use our controller instead. And within this section here as the second parameter right here, we would pass our custom uh, callback where we would handle the logic of uh, sending the notification to the user and also the way the URL is generated. But this sounds like too much work. We need to create a new controller. We need to add too much logic to it. Uh, there is actually better and easier way to do this. So let's go back to the password broker and let's find this method. So we need to open the user model and the user model extends the authenticatable and authenticatable is just an alias to the auth user. So we open that and we have the can reset password trait. So let's open that and we see that method right here. Send password reset notification. That's the method that's being called from here. And this simply uh, notifies the user using reset password notification. And that's an alias to the reset password. So let's open that. And we found the section that actually sends the email to the user and the section that generates the URL. So let's close all the other files and let's see how the URL is being created. So if the custom callback is given, it will use that callback to set the URL. Otherwise, it will use this method to set the URL. And this method basically gets the root domain, which is the API domain. And in my case, that is localhost port 5000. 
and appends the password reset named route to it. And as you notice, this is the same name as the one commented out right here. So if you don't have this route and you make a post request to this, you will get an exception because this named route does not exist and you're not passing a custom callback. So that's why this uh, route needs to exist. But in our case, it doesn't make sense because our SPA is on a different domain. It's on localhost port 3000. So we cannot really use this. So we need to customize the domain that's being used in the email sent to the user. So let's delete this from here. We see here that we could customize it using this callback. And luckily there is a method here, create URL using that we can call to pass our callback to. And we can call this from a service provider. So let's open app service provider. And within the boot method, we can do reset password, create URL using and pass our callback. The first parameter that callback gets is the notifiable object. And the second one is the token. And here we can have our logic on how the URL is generated. I'm going to hard code the SPA domain. In a real application, you would not hard code anything here. This would come from uh, your config file and environment variable, but for now, this is fine. So I'm going to hard code here, localhost port 3000, reset password, and pass the token here, and also pass the email to the URL. And the email we can get from the notifiable object. And the method is, let's see, get email for password reset. There is nothing else that we need to configure on the API side. We are done on the API side. So now we can actually start implementing the SBA. First thing we need to do on the SBA side is we need to add the forgot password link uh, right below the sign in button here so that when user clicks it, it opens a new page where a user can enter the email address and proceed with the password reset. So I'm going to copy this create new account uh, link right here and put it right under the sign in button we can put it within the div we can change the link to forgot password and change this to forgot password and we have it right here let's center that text and if i hit this we get 404 because we haven't added the page yet so let's create the page here We need two states here. First one is to store the email. The second state is to store the status if the email was sent or not. Then we need the reset function that will actually send the email to the user. This will make a post request to our endpoint. And the endpoint is forgot password. And on success, we set the email sent to true. And if there is an error, we alert the user and we set the email sent to false. Now for the JSX, I'm just going to paste in the JSX that I wrote before. It's pretty much the same JSX as the one for a login page. So I'm going to paste it here. Let's import the link. And as you see, we have the forgot password page now. We can go to the create new account from it. And from here, we can go back to the login page. And if we hit forgot password, we're back to the reset password page. So now if I enter the email address and hit reset it's going to send the email for the email driver on the api side i'm using the log so the email will go in the log file so we'll check it there so hit reset and the email has been sent successfully let's open the log file and the email is right here and it contains the correct domain so our uh, change in the app service provider worked it's not using the localhost port 5000 it's using the localhost port 3000 which is our spa domain so let's copy this url put it in the browser and let's visit we're gonna get 404 because the page does not exist yet so let's add the reset password directory and within this directory we're going to add a dynamic page and we're going to call that token.js. We need the router here to get the token and the email from the URL and also to redirect the user. So we'll use the use router hook. Then we can extract the token and the email from the URL using the router. 
and we also need a state for the form input which will contain the new password and the email for the user. Now before I continue with this I forgot to add something to the forgot password uh, page. In here I will make the post request to the forgot password but I am not making the initial request to initialize the CSRF token. Now the reason this worked is because the CSRF token was already initialized before because I was logged in and I logged out and that's why it worked. But in a real case, user might go to the forgot password first before logging in with any other user and then they would get the CSRF token mismatch error because the token is not initialized. So in a real application, I would abstract this away into an utility uh, function where I would check if the CSRF token has been initialized or not and if not only then make the call to initialize the CSRF token we can just copy the same call from the login page which is this here and just wrap it around it and let's go back to the dynamic page we're getting error because we're not returning any JSX but before that, we need to add a function to handle the form input, and I'm going to copy the one from here. And again, in a real application, you would uh, abstract this away or make it reusable so you don't duplicate the code. Uh, or you might use some form uh, library like uh, Formic, for example. And the next thing we need is an update method. And I'm going to copy the code from the forgot password uh, page and put it right here and just replace this endpoint here with reset password and we need to pass the form input as well as the token and then on success we can alert the user that the password has been reset and then redirect the user to the login page so, and for the JSX I'm just going to paste in the JSX which is going to be very similar to the login page as well and refresh the page and we have the reset password page so now when the user visits their URL from the email they will be directed to this page the email will be pre-filled and then they can enter the password now let's change this to confirm password placeholder and this should work so let's go ahead and update the password and hit update and the password has been reset successfully and we redirect it to the login page and now let's try to log in with the new password. And that worked. The user was successfully logged in. Thank you for watching, guys. Please hit like and subscribe. This is a new channel, and let's grow it together. And I will see you on the next video.